All right, Braden. This is my son, Braden. He's 14. He uh, <clears throat> doesn't have a ton of experience TIG welding. So we're going to show that uh, you don't have to be a pro. You know, you're going to mess up at first. It's going to be tricky at first. But we're just going to show you that uh, anybody can learn to TIG weld. Uh, it's been months since Braden has tried so he's he's bound to have a little bit of struggle but we'll get there right so let me get zoomed in here and we're gonna go over some fundamentals okay we're using our everlast 255 ext and we're running our edge welding uh that's a number five quartz cup all right so, With steel, it's okay, and with stainless, it's okay to keep your rod nice and close like that because you're keeping the end of it shielded by the gas. Yeah. But with aluminum, it's just going to melt so, away. So, I so, so, yep, you're going to want to keep your arc length just a little bit tighter, okay? Keep your arc length just a little bit tighter. and then let out of the pedal slowly and then bring your torch back. That's that's looking beautiful though. I mean those are your first two TIG welds in months, yeah. right? Like I said, you're going to want to add a little more filler and then back out of it slowly instead of well, snapping started, out. Yeah, my fault. And I knew something was wrong. Show, right show me your arc lengths real quick. Okay. A little tighter. A little tighter. Right there. You want it about an eighth of an inch off. Now with aluminum, your puddle's gonna grow faster and bigger than with steel. So that's where a lot of people get in trouble and I even have problems sometimes is I'll get too tight with my arc length and I'll dab the rod and the puddle will grow and oh. right into your tungsten. So so you're doing good at keeping the tungsten out of the material. Yeah. But I think um, you just fine. need to remember to pull the rod out and then back in. Right and also and like towards so like the end I couldn't like I don't know why but my glove wouldn't slide anymore so I was like oh, oh yeah. look to hand that stuff. Yeah. the biggest the most important thing about welding whether it's MIG stick TIG any of it the most important thing is being comfortable if you're not comfortable you're going to have a shitty weld yeah. no matter what okay let's uh 
get the weld filter on and we'll take some arc shots. So that one went really well. Um, you know what you need to work on, right? Keep your arc length tight and then uh, you're going to need to... What are you going to do with your rod? Show me how you're going to dab your rod. Dab it and pull back. Dab it and pull back. Right? And so, make sure my puddle doesn't get too big with the Yep. Yep. So, yeah. You remember, once you start your puddle, once you start moving about an inch, that material is going to start to heat up and it's going to wash out. Your weld's going to flatten out. And that's when you want to start backing out of the pedal ever so slightly, okay? okay. Not too much, just a little bit um, so that you, you can keep that consistent bead, okay? Like right that consistent. There, I was too hot. Uh, yeah, it started getting hot right there, and then and you then backed out down. and it got taller, mm -hmm. right? So, <clears throat> so you want to just find that, that perfect spot where you're backing out just ever so slightly to where your bead, your dabs are staying the same, your puddle is consistent, okay? And in your head, kind of keep time. Dab, move. Dab, move. Dab, move. If you can get a rhythm going, that will help you. Yeah. All right, let's get to business. Okay, so yeah, so so back out of the pedal before you pull that torch away. Okay. Yeah, so that was good. dab a little extra yeah, so I right there you could have dabbed just a little more so it uh, but you good. backed out very nice okay. I mean look at that you have one two three four five six six beads and you're already kicking ass I mean that's that's really good dude very good um, let's get this weld filter off of here yeah um, what do you think um, you can do differently? Probably dip the rod more at the end and then also like a little bit more with like my amperage and my foot pedal. But I think I could work on getting used to like, like seeing, oh, how do I explain it? Like, like seeing how the puddle Seeing the puddle grow. Yeah. yeah, yep. Yeah, watching the puddle grow, watching your consistency there that you know that's a tricky part about tig welding is you're doing three different things you know you've got a torch in one hand your filler rod you're running the pedal with your foot um, and then you're also trying to pay attention to all that right so you're doing really good um, if you look I mean which one was your last one uh, this one yeah I mean hell that's awesome thank you yeah you're doing great so I mean the fundamentals torch angle show me your torch angle and your arc length <clears throat> nope back your hood off so I can see oh, it sorry. so the camera can see so okay that's your arc length yeah see that about an eighth of an inch off of the material 
with aluminum you can be more straight in like that and that'll help you to keep from your rod melting away what else were you struggling with with the rod melting away and how did you fix that oh, so i had it too close when i oh i gotta be oh sorry I had it too close to where I, it was just melting, so I had to just back it off and then bring it back in, back it off, bring it back in, so it didn't melt to the material. Okay, so it's not burning your filler rod away, yeah. right? Um, so we went over um, torch angle, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, 15 degrees is standard torch angle. With aluminum, you can go in a little straighter like that. The reason you have that torch angle is to provide shielding gas and that cleaning action. Yeah. When you're welding on AC power, when you're welding aluminum, yeah. that white frosty area there, that's your cleaning action, okay? And mm -hmm. it's actually cleaning and etching the aluminum, burning through that oxide layer as you go. Yeah. And that's why you want the torch facing forward, right? Okay. But with aluminum, it's hard because that much heat facing forward, and then Makes your rod coming in this way, it wants to melt away. Yeah. So yeah, so you can go a little more straight in with that eighth inch arc length, right? Yeah. So torch angle, arc length, amperage, right? Controlling the foot pedal. Um, that's eighth inch aluminum right there. So, you know, the rule of thumb is an amp per thousand stick with, with steel anyway. That's 0.125 thickness, which would be 125 amps on DC, but we're welding AC. Aluminum takes a lot more amperage. So you're probably running around 180 to 200 amps right there. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously you're manipulating that with your foot pedal. Mm -hmm. So I think I just have the machine set at 200 and I'm letting you figure it out, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, do you get, have anything to add as far as tips or? Just uh, make sure your arc length is like a good amount. Make sure your angle of the torch is a good amount also. And then also what really helped me was putting the, uh, the actual, like, what's it called, whip? Oh, uh, my, putting the whip yeah, over your shoulder. Over my shoulder. And, that um, takes the weight of the hoses off exactly, of you, yeah. you know. Yeah, and that's also awesome. Just like, making sure I back out. Yeah, back that rod out. Yeah. Awesome. Um, it, you know what I noticed with those uh, edge cups is too, you can actually see through it. So you yeah, can I see like your that. puddle. I like that, yeah. yeah, it makes it a hell of a lot easier when you can see your puddle through the, the glass. Yeah, with yeah. The pink with the pink ceramic mm -hmm. ones you can't. So anyway. Um, and uh, Please like our video, subscribe, and thank you to Ed Welding for our gloves, and uh, also thank you for Everlast for our machine. Yeah. Bam. Yeah, thanks guys.